Uh, today we're back in the shed. Uh, it's horrible weather outside, uh, so we've decided to come in and do a bit of woodworking. So today we're going to make a natural edge picture frame uh, out of natural edge U. So let's get started. So here we've got our natural edge U, lovely piece of wood. Uh, we've cut an edge straight along there, and what we've got to do is we've got to measure our picture and then cut out a distance so we'll measure it now right we've placed our picture I've got two here but we're just going to be using this one of the church and we've placed our picture on the piece of wood to make sure that the piece of wood is wide enough this is using a 5 inch a 7 inch picture and we're going to be using perspex for the front of the picture and a piece of hardboard at the back to compress it and we're going to have to cut a, a square out of the middle and then recess place in for the spurs bets. So what we're going to do now is now we know that the picture's around 5 inches when I printed it off width wise we want to keep about an inch and a half on each side to show the wood off so we me move that away Way. measure from the edge if we work that out that gives us 8 inches so we'll make a mark at 8 inches move the ruler down measure another mark at 8 inches move it up and one at 8 inches then we're just going to draw a line straight across because these edges are not straight this is how we have to do it. Try and give us a straight edge. So, there we have it. So we've got enough space for our picture to go in the middle and we've got an inch and a half on either side. So the only way that I can cut this out because I haven't got anything else to cut it out with is using a jigsaw. So move the piece of wood over the side and the table you've got it rested on and then we'll get our jigsaw out and we'll cut across this line here to give us our piece of wood You'll find that when this gets to the centre, it gets very hard and it's quite hard to cut through. So we'll just work our way through that. Right, the next thing you need to do is to put your piece of perspex or glass that measures 5 inches by 7 inches and if you remember we cut so that there was an inch and a half on either side so what you want to do is put your rule up against the edge just one edge and make sure that the piece of perspex is an inch and a half in now to do the top and bottom there's not really anything to go off because you've got this uneven edge so you're going to have to do that by eye just line it up turn it, twist it until you think that that's about right so I'm quite happy with that then what you need to do is just mark that edge on both sides mark the bottom piece so and just go around and put a line on all the sides. It's 
now we've got our outer edge but if we cut that out it would just fall through so what we need to do is we need to measure it so we'll do that now all right what we're going to do now is put our rule on and i think if we come in about three eighths do a mark from your marks that you've just made We'll do that all the way around again. Just the bottom ones now. That'll then give us our inner piece that we can cut out on the scroll saw or you can use a jigsaw to cut this out. So what you need to do now is just where you've marked them, draw a line across, straight across, no matter if it overlaps where you've drawn the other lines. It's best if you do that to be honest and then you make sure that you hit each corner. we've got our dimension for our inner picture now so we'll go over to the saw and we'll cut that out right we're now over at the scroll saw and i've just started to cut through the board and i'm going to cut the middle section out that we've just marked out so i'll go ahead and do that now the next time you see it we'll have the middle section all cut out and we'll move on to ready to routing out the outer section so that we can place the glass in. Right, you can now see that we've cut our piece out and we've got the middle cut out. So the next thing to do, because we want this natural edge to the front, is if you remember, we drew round this and marked up for three apes. So we need to flip this piece of wood over and mark up again round the edges from this, the marks that we've done, the outcut that we've done. And we want to mark three eighths all the way around again. And we want to draw a line right across and round just like we did before. And that's going to be our guide for routing out the depth. Right, I've measured the thickness of the acrylic, the paper and the hardboard that I'm going to use for the back. Uh, and it comes out at about 5mm. So, sorry but my caliper is in millimetres. So, you can use an online converter to convert that into inches but it comes out about 5mm so I'm going to need to route down 5mm into this so that I can fit all that in there so we'll move over to the router right we've got our router set, set to the depth that we need which is 5mm clamp the uh, piece of wood in space and what we need to do is we need to starting from the inside route up to the line using the straight cutting bit 
and go to the top but you obviously because the bit is round you won't be able to get straight into the corner and we'll use a little chisel to chisel that out when we're finished so we'll get started on that Right, we're now routed out, as you can see, all around this edge. So we've got this groove round. And I use the chisel just to go in the corners and cut them square. So now we've got our depth ready for our perspex to go in there. And our photo and our hardwood back in. So the next step is to cut out a piece of the hardboard. So we've got some hardboard here. And this is dead easy now. All you need to do is duplicate the size of your perspex. Just put that on all the corners. If you've got a square edge it's even better. But if not, just put it onto your piece of wood and then just draw around it. All we need to do now is draw the line. And we've got our line ready to cut out for the backing board. So I'll just do that on the bandsaw and then we'll come back to the table. Right, the hard board's been cut out and it now fits nicely into the groove that we've made. Now I've not taken off the lining on the front of the perspex yet because I don't want to do that until we've sanded it. But there we go. There's the perspex with the picture and then the backing board on top of that. So the next thing to do on our list is to sand it and give it a good finish. So, but before we do that, you can do another thing, which I may do, see how it turns out on this, is to round these edges over with a router, instead of it just being a straight edge. So I think I'm going to do that now actually, and then we'll come back and see what that looks like. Right, we've now done an edging piece on the inside, as you can see there quite hard wood to cut into so you have to make a few passes uh, but we managed to do it and it's burnt a little bit of the wood but that'll give it a bit of extra character I think so the next stage is sanding so we'll have to go over this with the palm sander and try and get it as smooth as we possibly can before we do the finishing Caretaker's wood barn, uh, which is like a wax that you put on, and that should bring up the colour really nice. And then we'll put some of these on, if you can see them. Uh, they're just like a butterfly, uh, which butterfly wings, 
which goes on the back to hold in the hardboard and the perspex. So I'll just paint on the sanding sealer now. Now I'm going to apply this sanding sealer with a rag. Just pour some onto the rag and rub it onto the wood. As you see the wood soaks up the sanding sealer pretty quick. And start to see the colours of them grains come out. So you'll need quite a bit of this. Get it in every nook and cranny that's on the wood. It does smell quite a lot, so I'd recommend doing this in a well ventilated area. Uh, I always have the door open. And if you can, use a mask. You can really see that colour coming out now. And depending on what type of wood you're using, this will bring out the grain again. And you can go over it with fine sandpaper. just before you put your final lot of finish on. Undo the sides as well. I do really like you and I try to use it as much as possible. Uh, I've just managed to get older some of this, so I'll probably be using it in my projects a lot more. Last little bit on. That's it, so we'll leave that for a little while to soak in and then we'll come back and apply our wood barn. Right, the sanding sealer is now dried and I'm just going to start putting the final finish on. We're just using a cloth to rub this in. It's got a beautiful smell to it. You rub it in. All over. And use another part of the rag just to go over it, give it a bit of a buffing up. Gives it a slight shine this one, but nothing major because I don't want massive shine on this. But it's all up to preferences. So if you like a nice shiny finish, then go for it and put a nice shiny finish on. So it does take a little bit of time this, but I think it pays off in the end.
So, when you come back, I'll have finished putting the wood balm on. And we'll take a closer look. Right, we've now polished up the wood, and the final step is to put these clips on. See there? And they'll hold on the hardboard and the acrylic. Uh, you can maybe see that I've had to put some strengtheners on here, uh, put them all around so that it's level. And this is because I've noticed that there's a crack on each side. Uh, I didn't see it, but it seems to have gone a lot worse since I've cut this middle hole out. So next time I make one, I'll have to check for cracks in the wood. But you can't see the cracks on the front side, it's just the back. So I put these strengtheners on just to hold it in place, make sure that there's no more cracks appearing. So, all we need to do is get your screw, pull that through. I'd like to have used brass, but I haven't got any brass ones. So you pull that through the butterfly, put that near the edge, we're probably talking uh, one eighth, something like that, so that half at least of the butterfly is hanging over the edge that we've cut out. As you can see there. Bring that closer. Half of it is hanging over. And all you do then is you just screw that in place. Just screw that down. And I'm going to use four of these. Now you don't want to screw them too tight because you do want to be able to twist them. But you want them quite tight. So I'm going to use four of these. One on each side. So one in the middle. There. Can be a bit fiddly, so you you can drill pre holes in just so that your screw goes in a bit easier when you're starting off. Once it's got going on, you're fine. Then you do the same again. On this side, I'm going to do it at the bottom so they're opposites. Just makes it a little bit sturdier. The last and final one, put at the top, and I'll put it offset slightly. Because that one's at the top, I'll put it on this side. Now to mount this on the wall, all you need is either a hook and some string that you can do from either side or you can put a clip that you can buy along the top and then you just rest that clip onto a screw or a nail that you've got already got in the wall. Uh, I haven't got one at the moment to put on it so I'll have to put that on later on when I order that. So all we've got to do now is put our picture together. So, we get our acrylic, peel off the outer piece that protects it, peel off the inner piece that protects it. And go all out of the way. 
place that into our slot that we made. That fits nicely. Wipe any dust off that you may have in the workshop that's got onto it. And lay your picture on top. Wipe any dust off because sometimes the dust does set on everything. And then finally we'll put our piece of hardboard on top and just wipe the dust off that. And place that on like so. And then we twist our pieces. I'm going around like that and then we have our photo frame as you can see this would look lovely in any home it's got that rustic look but modern well hello everyone thanks for watching my video I hope you enjoyed it uh, I really enjoyed making this project and I hope to see you soon with another video and please subscribe to my channel for lots more videos on woodworking. From the UK Woodworker, see you soon. Bye.